Right, David, I've left a list of things I want you to do while I'm out. The list is on the fridge and I need them all done before I get back. Uh, okay. How long will you be out for, Mr. Daz? I won't be back until tonight, so you've got plenty of time. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to have a day at the races. Oh, what's that? It's horse racing. I haven't been for quite some time and it's nice weather today, so I thought it's perfect. Oh, horses, can I come? No, you've got work to do here. Okay, what time is Nick coming home? How should I know? He said he's going into work, but I don't know how long for. Okay. Whatever you do, do not tell him where I am. I want a peaceful day. I won't. Right, I'm off. See ya. What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel and today we are looking back at episode 6 from season 1 and this one is called At The Races and for me I was not going to release this episode and uh, I created it, I had done everything that needed to be done for it, it was ready to be uploaded and I watched it back and it's strange because I didn't really like it that I sat and watched it back and like a couple of people that watched it before I uploaded it said it was good said it was fine and surprisingly from season one this is one of the most viewed episodes and it's one that got a lot of good reactions back from social media so twitter facebook and things like that but for some reason i, I don't know it's just even now like i sit and watch it back and there's there's things that i've done in this episode that i don't understand why i've done them and i don't like for example david <clears throat> the way David was just standing and the way David's standing there is he, he's not Naomi Campbell that he's <laughs> he's not a supermodel but he's standing like a female model and his expressions is like a female model and I don't know why I put that in and uh, yeah and even down to like if you look out at the right hand side window now now I use the um the image planes on the back for the background ambience and this one is completely different if you go back to the previous episode and look out of this kitchen window it's a completely different background so it's almost like they've picked the apartment up and they've moved the apartment to somewhere else because it's completely different in the background and on the right hand window it cuts off that that image completely cuts off so you can see that it's an image back there it's not an actual background so yeah we're going to get into it there are a few things in there. there there might be some stories in there that oh, there will be some stories in there from where i got the ideas from but as it stands for for the way that I've done this, I, it wasn't one of my favourite episodes. It was probably one of my least favourite episodes. But I don't know. Let's see if it's grown on me a bit since then. Yeah, bye, Mr. Daz. Oh, hi, guys. They didn't need me in work. What's the plans for today? Oh, nothing. David is just going to get on with some things I need doing. OK, and what about you? Uh, I just need to run some errands. I shouldn't be too long. Uh, but you said you was going to be out all day, Mr. Daz. Yes, thank you. Now shut up, David. Okay. What's going on? Where are you going? Oh, fine. I'm going to the horse racing for the day. Oh, I used to love the horse racing. I remember going with my granddad when I was a kid. Oh, they were good memories. He taught me so much about horse racing. So that was the general idea for me, that it wasn't the horse racing. When I was a kid, that we used to go to the Greyhound track a lot, and it would have been... Me, my mum, my dad, my brother, my three sisters, and usually my granddad. And then if we met any other family over there. And that, like, going back to, like, memories as a kid, that I don't have that many memories with my granddad. That there was, there's a few for Christmas, that, but the most ones were at the Greyhound tracks. And he used to love it, and he used to always pick the winners. So, like, he, he passed away years ago, but the idea was to, I've, I've got, my nan who passed away like from episode one with her picture so i managed to get her in but I, I wanted a way to try and get my granddad in so it's something that i've done with him in the past and it's a mention and for him it was he loved going over to the greyhounds and he loved betting on the horses so this was just a way to it's like a tribute to him yeah that's great anyway see ya yeah to this day i still haven't chosen a losing horse what was that Oh, it's nothing. My granddad used to love taking me because I always knew he would win. Really? How? It's the same again for this episode. That, and, and it's what I don't like about it. that The camera work. Like I've, I've mentioned about the image at the back. That I mentioned about the way David was standing. But even the camera work, it don't make no sense here. Because Nick is actually cut out. Some of his body is cut out of the shot. And 
Like even David, you can't even see all of David and it don't make no sense because half of the camera shot is the kitchen table and there's nothing going on there. So there was no reason for me not to move that camera more to the left to get all three of them in the shot. And if I remember rightly, the idea was that if I moved it to the left more, then the image at the back would have been showing. And <clears throat> yeah, it was, it was, to be honest, this was just a shamble of an episode when I created it. And was that every single race? No, don't be silly. I used to just sit and watch the horses as they paraded, and if one of them jumped out at me, I would tell my granddad and he'd back that one, and I never lost. Oh, wow. Would you like to come with me? Oh, I would love to. Can I come? No. Okay. Oh, come on then. Yay! So which horse track are we going to? We're going to Lingfield. It's not too far. Okay, cool. So how long have you been betting on horses? For as long as I can remember, really. Another thing that I've noticed is that with this um, with this Range Rover, I actually purchased this from the Daz 3D store. That I had some vehicles aside that was from the Reillusion store, but it it was either that the the interiors just didn't fit the mold and like I didn't want to be used so I was having a look around and it was at the time when I, I started to like get more into Daz 3D and realised that they had their own like their own store, their own marketplace. So what I'd done is I actually went onto their store and I found this Range Rover and it, uh, it was on it was on offer. I think it was like ten dollars on there which works out to around about seven pound. So I thought I'll do that. I thought I'll buy this and this can be Mr Daz's car and it was only recently that um, I started to explore more with it because I already knew that like, I had the meshes separated. So if I wanted to, I could open doors and close doors and windows and things like that. But I've only just realized that like, what I can do is the, the shot that you just see that you're probably going to see again from outside the window at the front of the car is it's like tinted glass. So you can't see in clearly. So I've just recently started to do it. That I've used the um, opacity um, sliders just to like untint that window a bit, so you can get a better view inside the car. And then I don't have to use these shots because these close-up shots in the car, where you've got uh, the the focal length and the angle of views, I hate using them because it it just looks weird. Like I don't like the way it looks. Picking winners. Not really. I usually pick the horse that has two left feet and ain't got a clue where it's going. Oh, that's not good. So you lose a lot of money. I'm not a big gambler. I usually just put about £500 on each race. £500? Where do you get the money to gamble that much money away? Wouldn't you like to know? I told you already I'm okay for money. How much is okay? Well, enough that I wouldn't have to ever work again, but not enough that I'd want to stop working. Oh, that must be nice. I'm rubbish for money. I usually just waste it as soon as I get it. Well, you're never going to feel financially secure then, are you? Tell me about it. I need to be more like you. So how much are you worth then, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I do mind. I'd rather not discuss money while the help is in the car. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, who's the help? You are. Oh, how do I help? Oh, why did I bring you? It means that you work for me and Mr Daz. The help is the old-fashioned way of saying you do a lot for us. Oh, okay. I'm the help. Excuse me, but you work for me, not us. How do you figure? I pay him the same amount of money you do each week. Uh, well, Mr. Daz only pays me. Yeah, shut up, David. Oh. <clears throat> so, the idea... When, when I got the original idea for this episode was, uh, as I said in the previous video, like you got to learn a bit about David and his lifestyle at home with his mum and his siblings and that. And in this one, it's finding out that Mr. Daz has got a bit of money that... And it's going to be quite a while down the line, like through episodes, that you're going to find out just how much you you're not you're not going to find out the exact amount that he's worth, but you're going to find out how he earned his money and what he had to do to get it. And there was a very unexpected career for him. There were some investments that helped him bring it in. So you'll get the idea of how much he could be worth, but that's for later down the line. And this is like I said that I know it's just started to fade out now, but you can see. The windscreen here that I didn't like it simply because you can't see clearly into the car and 
I didn't want that. I, I didn't want to use the camera inside the car because I don't like the angle of view. And having the camera outside of the car means the tinted window. So yeah, there, there was a few bits here and there that I didn't like and things that I found workarounds for. So Nick, what horse am I betting on? Give me time. I need to watch them as they're parading around before the race. Okay, so this was my biggest issue. And sorry, I've got a very squeaky chair and I've crossed my legs and my knees locked, so I need to undo it now. So you might hear a bit of squeaking. But <clears throat> this was the idea with this episode. And I think this is why I didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to. And that is simply because with this scene, which makes up a majority of the episode, there is no animation behind it. All it is is that Nick, Mr. Daz and David are animated in iClone and this is all green screened and the background is just an image of a racetrack. I believe it's Lingfield and <clears throat> that's what I didn't like because a majority of this episode is for this scene. There's not really much you can do with it in terms of camera angles and everything because it's just an image in the background. So it, it's a very static scene. Not much happens apart from the talking and that. And I think that was just something that it put me off. It it, it did put me off with this episode a lot because I've done it this way. And there, there hasn't been a scene since that I've done this way because of this episode. I need some winners. Okay. I want to buy a new entertainment system for my bedroom. I see this 3D TV that looks amazing. It's like you're actually part of the movie. Wow, can I watch it with you, Mr. Dez? No. Why don't you use your own money to bet on Nick's horses and you might win enough to buy your own? Well, my mum always said that gambling is bad and that I shouldn't do it. Well, your mum ain't here and you're a grown man so you can do what you like. Oh, okay. Nick, the race is going to start in a few minutes. Have you got a horse for me yet? Yeah, that one in the purple. Same again, the, and this is something that it has been worked on a hell of a lot since, and the animation that you just see there with Nick, like Nick lifted his arm to point at a horse, and I don't like it because, for one, he's lifted his arm and it's gone through his chest. Two, it looks like he's got man boobs, like big man boobs there if you look at this picture, and it's not natural that like if you're if you're gonna point to something, you're not gonna lift your whole arm to point, you you're just gonna lift your elbow and things like that. So as much as I didn't like this episode, watching it back for the times that I did gave me a lot of ideas of where I was going wrong and what I needed to improve on. And I think it was after this episode that I think I spent a couple of days just using um a dummy in iClone just to do different animations and get the idea of doing different things. So yeah, we from that. <clears throat> I think we've come we've come a long way from what went wrong in this episode, and there are still some things that I need to work on and some things that I still don't spot. But from what I've done here, we have come a long way since then. Take a look. Oh, even money. That's good enough. Why are you using your phone? Instant payout and better odds. Again. The, the phone there, if you, if you was paying attention, like if I just go back a fraction, that, let's see if I can, right, so. Let's take a look. Oh, even money, that's good enough. So, Why are you let's using have a your look. phone? Yeah. Little things like that, and like, <clears throat> back when I first started doing this, the way I used to do it is, I used to create a scene, and then once it was completed, I'd hit the play button and I'd sit and watch it, but it, it depends. Like at the time we was going through a lockdown, I started creating this series through a lockdown. So I had the kids at home, I had my little girl at home and there was a lot of distractions around. So I could be sitting there watching it, but I'm not paying attention to it. And it was a few episodes after this. Things like how that phone now is in his hand, you're going to see that quite a bit in, in a, quite a few episodes from the first season. But now I, I go frame by frame rather than just hitting that play button that if it's 2,000 frames, I'm going through 2,000 frames just to make sure that things like that don't happen because I can't stand it because it, it's just laziness because it's such, such an easy thing to sort out. And even the fact that his phone's upside down. One thing that I've never done that doesn't really bother me is like Mr. Daz has just gone onto his phone to place a bet. But... 
if you sorry, my phone's ringing. But if you look at his phone, for one, it's upside down, and two, he's not got an app open to place a bit. But that's it's not something that was ever an issue for me. That like that side of it, it's just the animation side and having it implanted into his hand, which I hated. I'm better odds. Oh, okay. I'm back. Where have you been? I didn't know what holes to pick out, so that old man over there put a bet on for me. You let someone else put a bet on for you? Yeah, he said it's going to win me lots of monies. Yeah, we'll see. Right, the race is about to start. Shut up now. Okay. Come on, you lazy git. Whip the crap out of him. Oh, this horse is never going to bloody win. Look how far behind he is. There's still time. How is there still time? It's the last two furlongs and he's seventh. Wait for it. Oh, he lost. Well, that's a first for me. Oh. Right, so again, the post-production side of this wasn't really the best. And for one, the, the race had just started. And then just like that, the race was finishing. But the, the screen never even blacked out. It never said like a few seconds later or whatever. It, it Nothing happened. And even down to the ambient side of it, that if you're at a racetrack. Now, I've been to a racetrack before. And if you're there when the race starts, there's a lot of noise. Not only like from the horses running on what whatever ground they're running on, but you've got the crowd, you've got the, the the punters that are cheering on their horses. And here you get nothing. And it, it's just another thing that it, for everything that you do in the episode, you need to add the realism side to it. And for this, it's not realistic at all. It would have been better off sitting in an empty betting shop as opposed to being at a racetrack because there was no ambience behind it. Favourite as well? Nick, you just lost me £500. No, I didn't. You asked me to pick a horse and that's what I did. Yeah, but you said you've never picked a loser. Well, I was a kid at the time. Yeah, whatever. Just concentrate better when the next lot run. Okay. What the hell, Nick? You've picked five horses and not a single one of them have even placed in a race. Were you lying to me about picking winners? No, not at all. Let me call my granddad. Maybe I've done something as a kid that I'm not doing now. Yeah, you need to bloody do that. Stupid man costing me all my bloody stupid money. Hi, granddad. It's Nick. No, Nick. Your grandson, Nick? Yes, I'm at the horse racing. Do you remember when I was a kid and you used to bring me here? Well, how did I pick winners back then? Oh, okay. Thanks, granddad. So, is there a reason why you're not picking winners? Yeah, and it's kind of embarrassing. I don't care, I just want to win some of my money back, so tell me. Well, I did used to pick winners all the time, but it was Graham racing and not horse racing. What? How the hell can you get horse racing and Graham racing mixed up? One has horses running and the other has dogs. Are you that stupid? Well, I don't actually remember going. I was only four at the time. You was four years old. A toddler barely out of nappies. Well, yeah, my granddad used to always tell me that I was his lucky charm because I always picked the right dogs. Well, that's just fan bloody tastic, isn't it? Now I've got one race left over to try and recover some of the money that I've lost. Gamble aware, Mr. Daz. You should never chase your losses. Nick, if you don't get out of my face, I'm going to be chasing you with a cricket bat, so I will just back away. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go get a coffee. You want one? I'll take that as a no. I don't understand why I have to sit in the back. Because I can't stand to sit next to you right now, you go good useless waste of space. That's a bit harsh, Mr. Daz. Nick, just don't talk to me for the rest of the day. Fine. Did you enjoy your day at the races, David? Yeah, I can't believe I won all this money. Look, Mr. Daz, I can get a 3D TV now. Yeah, that's terrific, David. You just need to be careful. Why? Well, your mum said you shouldn't gamble. What's she going to say if you go home with all that money? Oh, yeah. What should I do? You could always buy the 3D TV and leave it at my place for now. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Mr. Daz. No, it's not, David. He just wants you to buy the TV and never plans to let you have it. How dare you? I'm trying to help him out here and do him a favour so he doesn't get into trouble. No, you're not. You're trying to manipulate him into getting something that you want. You want the TV, but you lost your money, so I know you're trying to get David to buy it, knowing full well that he's going to say yes, and that way you get a new TV and David gets nothing. Yeah, I know. Why do you need David to buy it anyway? I thought you said you had enough money to ensure that you never had to work again, yet you're acting as if you can't afford a TV. Well, I just didn't want to spend my own money. That is just pathetic. David, keep all of your money and do what you want with it. If your mum asks where you got it from, tell her I gave it to you for all the work you do for us. 
Okay. Stupid bloody man. What was that? I have nothing. I said I need to use the can. Well, that was a waste of a day. I should have gone alone. You carry on the way you're going and you'll probably spend the rest of your life alone. Promise? What is your problem? <coughs> uh, interestingly enough, there's... I, <coughs> I found a trick to, to determine between night and day. Now, obviously, the lights are near enough always on in the apartment, but I've, I wanted to do it that... Like I've got the background image there, which is the environment around the apartment, but I wanted to try and like do it so I'm able to select a daytime and a nighttime for the same image, so it's not changing. And the way I do that now is I'll only have one image of one background that I've taken because I don't want to go back to the same location twice, and I don't want to go and take a picture during the day and take a picture of a night. I've just took the one picture of this location, so... The way I now do it is the windows that are visible is I just add a wall. The, any normal wall that you see in the apartment here, I just add that, make it black and use the opacity side of it to then go down. And what it does is when you look out the window, it will make it dark and you can just hide that wall and it's light. So it's, it's a very, very quick work around it and it works well. But I, I must admit it does work well. You just be happy for David. He's probably never seen that kind of cash before, and all you could think about was your bloody TV. But it's 3D. A 3D TV, Nick. It gives you the feeling that you're part of the movie. Whatever. I'm going to bed. Enjoy your regular TV. I can't. I want a 3D TV. Right, so that's my dad. That My dad is one of these. That if he gets something in his head that he wants, he will not stop until he gets it. And if he can't get it, he, he will sulk. <laughs> That, <clears throat> and it, even down to a 3D TV, he's had it in his mind in the past. Um, he's a massive Doctor Who fan, and at one point when I was living with him, I did have a 3D TV, and he came upstairs to my room to watch Doctor Who one day while I was at work, and he never stopped going on about it for months and months of how he wanted a 3D TV, and... He, he never got one. He never managed to get one. I think then they started to come out with the 4K TVs and in his mind it's like, wow, 4K, I need one of them. Which we actually got him one for his birthday slash anniversary. Me, personally, that I would never have bought it, but my wife's very generous. She's a giver. I'm not. Hi, Mr. Daz. Hi, David. Did you go shopping for me? I did. Thank you. You can go home now if you like. I will, but first, can I just say something? I don't want the money that I want. If you want a 3D TV, then I can buy it for you. You would do that for me? Yes. But why? Uh, well, I've never had money before, Mr. Des. I've always managed to eat and have a roof over my head, but there was never any spare money, and I'm okay with that. Oh, I don't want your money, David. Just make sure you don't waste it. Go out and treat you and your mum to something. Okay, thank you. See you later. See you tomorrow, David. In this scene, that <clears throat> you'll, you'll notice like Mr. Daz was looking at David, but he was looking at David's legs there. In iClone, you do have the option that when you're looking at a specific object or person, it, it's a head and eye slider that will do it so that it, it, it raises and lowers the head to, to look in. So... If it looks strange, that if you look at a certain object and it looks strange like that, you can use that slider. But again, in this part, it made no sense that Mr. Daz was just looking straight at his legs and not actually like eye to eye contact. That was a really nice thing you did there, Mr. Daz. Oh, you heard all of that, huh? Yeah, every word. Oh, okay. Well, then I'd appreciate it if you didn't eavesdrop on conversations. Do you know how bloody rude that is? Oh, I'll give up with you. Like I said, that uh, for some reason, I, I don't know, it's this episode. But <clears throat> even watching about this, funny parts in it, but it's mainly the the personality of Mr. Daz and the way he responds to things. It's not so much the actual episode itself. The episode was done, the storyline was done, 
because I wanted to get my granddad in some sort of storyline in a way and for him he was a big gambler so this was an episode that was kind of made for him but I don't know if, like other people might think differently about it but for me this episode is I don't know, it was put in as a filler and even down to like I released these episodes every Saturday afternoon and this one got released I think it was on a Tuesday or a Wednesday because I wasn't planning on having it as part of the se- as part of the series and like I released it and it was getting views and like more and more views and it was even it was actually bringing in subscribers just through this video I don't know if it was the gamblers out there watching or whatever but it actually performed pretty well for at that time and yeah, I don't, don't know, it's just maybe what I don't like, other people might like and that, but yeah, this is the only episode that I've created that I've not been too keen on, but it, it served the purpose and it done well and it helped the channel a bit, so glad it's in there, but I won't be making any, I've, I've learned a lot from what I've done in this video, but anyway, thank you all for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed, we will be back tomorrow and I believe it is the promotion tomorrow, so Mr. Daz and Nick arguing about a promotion at work. So make sure you tune in for that. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you next time.